We're building a wild pool system on the top floor of a house, 24 feet deep in the water. We're doing all kinds of fun things, some waterfalls, wet walls. Catch up on the old stuff, follow the new. We love you guys. Back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. We got the floor coated. Up the walls done. Swim platform done. Wrap the inside of the hot tub. And now we're working our way around the windows. First layer on the windows, then all the orange ones will drop down and give a second layer full length. We're getting close. Back to work. My daughter Ashlyn over there working on the wall. She's awesome. All right, it's a beautiful night. Working the weekend as always. The hot tub main drains going in. Gonna now rebar all the benches and stairs. Got the second layer of waterproofing, actually second and third layer there. The several layers on the floor. Extra layers here. We've got a whole lot more rebar to dowel in. Benches, stairs are gonna go up that center section right there there'll be a lounge platform there and we're still working our way around with the grid mesh and extra waterproof bond coat around the deep end we're about ready to pour another seven to eight inches of concrete on the entire bottom starting at seven on that side moving to eight on that side on top of the two foot thick bottom of the pool with double mat, one inch bar. Hey guys, uh, quick announcement. And uh, before I even get into that, yes, I have blood running down my head, but I keep trying to get it to stop and it just keeps re-dripping. So just ignore that. I hit my head on some tile kind of hard. And if you can't tell, that's what I've been doing is laying tile on my back pool patio. But these showed up. I didn't think they were going to make it. They're like Christmas tree ornaments slash toys. They're scrappy. And <laughs> they turned out so cool. They're rubberized, so it's more than just an ornament that's going to break. They're really flexible. They have the solar panels the suspension, the gear, the search and rescue labeling. We have a limited number of them. We're just gonna sell them for 25 bucks a piece. It is gonna help us send more people into their flight training, the flight schools, get people their pilot's license. So if you wanna buy a little something for Christmas to hang on your tree and help people get into aviation as their Christmas gift paid for by us with your help, we'd love for you to join us for this Christmas holiday season. Also, I was shutting down the website earlier. I just got an extension from the group that was doing it and said, listen, I wanna get these out for Christmas. We're gonna try and get all the orders out as quickly as we can. You should get them for Christmas, but be patient if things are a little longer, but uh, we believe we can. The people that do it for us said they're gonna do everything they can to make it possible. So we love you guys. Merry Christmas, happy holiday season. Scrappy rubberized toys are here. Shirts, hats, gear. Let's get everybody into general aviation. We love you guys. Back to work. All right, I doubt you'll be able to hear this, but I'm excited we stayed up way into the dark last night, got everything ready. Like I said, we have a two foot thick bottom of this pool that's making all the structural span. Then we all waterproof that with two layers of bond coat with a geo mesh between it. So that's the second waterproof layer. We're now adding another layer of shot green. Then we're gonna add another two layers of bond coat and then we're going to add the rock waterproofing finish on top of that. So I'm excited. We're going to hand shake this hot tub right now. I'm going to dive in there. I like to hand shake my own stairs and do a bit of the work. So it's going to be a good day. Concrete. Back to work.
I'm over the hole. <laughs> so I'm coating my stainless steel and also bridging the gap between the stainless steel embeds that go all the way through that eight and a half inch to 12 inch floor. Then I'm using the mesh so then I can go from grout, bond coat waterproofing, which is this layer, and bond coat and have it bond to the rubberized coating. And then I'll put another layer of orange mesh over top of that um, lap joint and then I'll layer the entire floor of the entire pool with the uh, bond coat twice and then I'll coat it. A few more steps, back to work. Wow, that river's down. <laughs> Hard to believe it was all the way up near the top, over 10, 11 feet higher than that. Our sprinkler line trenches in. We're going just over a foot deep, and then if you look over at the curb, we still got to come up a, almost a foot of topsoil. So sprinkler lines are going to be down a good couple of feet, and then we'll still put all the drains in them. Should not be able to ever freeze. There's all the main lines coming out of inside the house. So all the valves, valve boxes, timers, and wiring are all indoors, nothing outdoors. Almost six and a half inches of concrete and uh, about six, eight inches of top soil. And the pipes are set a foot below the bottom grade. So they're almost 18 inches down with drains. It take a pretty hard frost to get to them, but they will all drain and auto winterize. So we should be in good shape. Back to work. Closer every day, run a compactor in multiple directions as we layer up the topsoil. And we're running string lines, concrete to concrete, to get the slope perfect to make sure there's no puddles. Right over there, we're setting road base for a fire pit. This will be a wood burning fire pit over there. We'll put a bunch of pine trees around it. Unlike these fire pits up here are all gas. Starting to get all the concrete minor imperfections cleared out, grinding out any slight cracks, opening them up, filling them with a Cicaplex concrete flexible bond. Backyards coming together. Use the string line crossed from concrete to concrete. The concrete was set with the lasers and then I'm string lining. Got several inches of fall from the house to the back. Right over there is going to be a fire pit. Boy, I love this place. Working around setting the tile. It's making it pretty easy because we set an aluminum track for a LED strip and we can just set this right on the laser set aluminum track for the light. So it's going really, really well. Now we're getting closer. Those blue lights can change colors. That'll be the waterfalls. They'll light up a lot more when the water's coming down. It's shining at where the water will be. Getting closer on the tile. Just pressure washing it again, getting it ready to tile the deep end of the bottom of the pool and then get ready for the pebble finish. Back to work. Could not be happier. Really coming along, getting closer every day. Gonna clean it and grout it. Back to work.
Getting a little closer every day. Got a little bit of rain. The river's kind of muddied up a little. It'll clear up shortly after, but I've got my liquid rubber membrane down. It's only down on part of it. You can see right here, I have two cross-lapping, overlapping layers of ice and water shield with waterproofing underneath it, then two layers of ice and water, rolls all the way up the wall, and then I float a liquid rubber membrane on top of it, which looks like this, and it's almost a quarter inch thick. Then I'll set my tile on this so that there's just no way I'll ever get a leak on top. So it's one inch thick quartzite stone will be going on top of all this and including around the entire pool. So a little closer every day, a little bit of rain, never hurt anyone. Back to work. Guys, I was out working in the rain and the rain never bothers me. But then it turned into a massive hailstorm. So I'm down in my echoey dungeon basement where I've got my two water vaults for the swimming pool and the hot tub overflow areas so that the skimmers are always skimming completely. I don't have a moving basket. I've machined a custom stainless steel skimmer discs with a flat level line inside to skim all the debris off. And everything that goes into the pool spills over the top. So it's a permanent set line skimmer. And it will always skim because on the backside, everything's draining into all the individual large pipes that come down into these vaults underground, part of the automatic mineralization system. The pumps will go here on the floor and all of that is gonna refeed and push to the pool and the hot tub. So, the skimmers are gonna work absolutely awesome. I can't wait, there's six of them in there. Uh, right now, I just finished plumbing up my sprinkler system. So I figured, well, I'm down here working, I'll explain what I did. There's always a problem I've had on past homes until I started doing this. And you got all these green boxes all over the yard with all your valves, which also means you have all your wiring and electrical running through the dirt, and if you did an extra good job, you ran it through a conduit so you can pull a new one. Oftentimes, they just bury the wire in the dirt, someone sticks a shovel through it someday, or a tree rips it apart, or something happens to your electrical. And it also puts all your sprinkler valves in a box where all the sprinklers are filling it with water, and in the winter, water and ice, and then oftentimes these valves are constantly having to be replaced. The biggest problem with that failure is that a lot of times you don't have a quick connect that you can spin it out and replace it. Or if you do, the model of valve you have was outdated two years ago and it's a quarter inch longer, which means the quick connects no longer work and you're digging up a great big sprinkler box in the mud cutting pipes and re-plumbing the entire system out in the yard in the mud and dirt. So this is what I've been doing. If you've got a basement, I went ahead and I plumbed all of these lines here run to four different quadrants of the house, front, side, side, rear, and every one of these lines are over three feet underground out of the house, and then they come up into a box that just indicates where my lines are if I ever wanted to make a change or connect on. But it's just a small box, and if you open it, all you actually see is a pile of gravel as an indication of where the lines are coming out of the ground. But there's no parts, no service. From that point, it runs to all the areas of the yard. It has all the pipes draining towards here because these are set so deep. And everything comes this direction. So to winterize it, I dump this valve, goes into the floor drain, and I can winterize all of my valves by just opening that and opening my valves. Everything drains in the entire yard. Now to be extra safe, of course, throughout the yard, you have drain changes. I put all the traditional drains everywhere else, mark where they are. But if someday I need to replace this valve, not only is there no wiring outside, all these wires are gonna to run to the back and right there, mounted on the wall, will be my sprinkler timer 
And the entire wiring in my whole yard actually is not in the yard. It runs from a timer here, which should be plugged into where I'm mounting my plug on this blue dot, run to these valves so all the electrical is indoors. Then, if I do have a failure in valve, which is much less likely because it's not out in the elements and freezing, I can spin this, spin this, and this spinning is a slip joint for one inch. It can go up and down an inch and a half. And I preset it at mid-slip so that it can go both directions. So if I need to replace this, I hand twist here, hand twist here, squish it together, slide it out, put in a new valve. If the valve is a different size, different length, it doesn't matter. They're all within a quarter to a half inch, which means any valve at any time will fit this assembly because I have a slip joint that allows me to pop it in, slide it till the O-rings hit, and tighten it down. So, Quick service, quick rotorization, no wires outside, everything drains to here, and winterization is in here in a nice warm environment. So that's how I did my sprinkler system. Clean and simple, that's every valve to the entire yard. There's not one valve or wire outside. So uh, now what I'm gonna do, look down here. You can see these are the pickup points for the water bulbs that are in here and the picker point for the bottom of the 27 foot wall area of the pool, which is actually 24 feet of water with a three foot jump edge. That's this one. I've got these units that are gonna go on here. Now I worry about someone being reckless with a broom and hitting this pipe hard enough to crack it. Now you'd have to literally beat it. But, so I just got some rubber boots. They're not clamping any pipes, but those will slide down protect anybody bumping into it at a fracture point, and then I'll glue that right there. The purpose of putting these more expensive fixtures on is now I'm gonna have a big, giant, 12-inch throw, three-inch ball valve that can handle 200 PSI plus right here, and I can close off water vault, water vault, or deep into the pool right here, and re-plumb everything, anything if I need to. If there's any kind of problem or I want to change a pump or anything, I have a point I can shut off the water, disconnect the bubble and go. And if somehow the big valve that goes here has a problem, which is unlikely. It's a super high-end, heavy, heavy industrial valve. But if it had a problem, I don't have to worry about a blue fitting. I unbolt this and pull it apart. Now, I won't use these bolts. Um, they didn't have stainless steel. These eventually could rust out if I got splashing going on, which I don't anticipate them ever getting wet, but I'll swap these for stainless later. And we're gonna go ahead and install the three valves. Everything from here, all my pumps for the pool system will be in here, so. I wanna point out something else I've done besides just these little rubber boots. These pipes, when they come through the concrete, they're actually coming through two foot, foot thick footings and then uh, the slab that's on top of that. So we're almost, let's see, eight and two foot, I can think, 34 inches thick. Uh, these pipes are actually uh, sleeve in a sleeve and where they come through the concrete, I had foam on it. Um, you don't want a chance for any of the concrete to move and break a pipe. Now, in this circumstance, with how thick the concrete is, all the rebar that's in it, and that there is a thermal change clear down here, 12 feet underground, the concrete's gonna just hold still. But I still went ahead and ran sleeves so that I could have a little movement. And then if you look right here, it doesn't look like it, but I'll zoom in and show you right here. What I did is then I unwrapped those sleeves out as I did each section, and I filled it with a liquid rubber. And so there's a seam right here where that was combed down and then went down a little sleeve. And it worked great because I was able to just take some liquid rubber, squeeze it in, and let it flow all the way down, come all the way up. So this actually has a little bit of movement in it. It's capable of it. Uh, but then I just masked it off and went ahead and taped it up so you can see this big, kind of messy <laughs> goo around it. So just cleaned it up, but it does have a little give. If you make sure everything can move a little, it doesn't break. Okay guys, I'm really picky. I know you don't really have to be this picky because this glue and primer actually does a pretty good job even if you miss a little spot, but it drives me nuts. I'm a bit OCD about it because a leak right here would be a nightmare. And so 
a leak anywhere is a nightmare, but we're good to go. Got to make sure you use a heavy glue. So I, I have five different types of glue here, all for PVC. Depends on the size of the pipe. This heavy gray, perfect. This heavy gray, actually, I need to turn that square to the wall. For no other reason other than I want it square to the wall. <laughs> The heavy gray you need to use once you start getting into the bigger pipes above two inch that's a little thicker. Um, but this will make a great joint and it squeezed out everywhere on the inside. And on the bottom, so I'll clean that mess up. I don't like drips everywhere. I'll turn the camera off. That's work.